Well, I've got a handful of stuff to talk about here, but before I start, uh, recently a few people have told me again that they were mysteriously unsubscribed from my channel, even though they didn't want to. As far as I know, YouTube is still denying the existence of the unsub glitch, even though it's clearly a thing. I thought it was finally sorted out by now, but apparently it still keeps happening. So sometimes people, even though they don't want to unsubscribe, videos don't show up in their feeds anymore and when they check they see that they are unsubscribed for whatever bizarre reason so what you can do if that happens to you uh, or for example if you haven't seen any of my videos in a while like this is the first that you stumble upon even though i upload a video every other day that might have happened so if you um, check when you're subscribed you look at a video next to where it says subscribed next to the channel name there is this bell icon that you can click on and uh, then you can check the box for send all notifications it may or may not help but it's at least something you can do right the other thing you can do is go to my facebook page i'll link it down below in the video description so i always post the link to every video upload on there so all right the other thing i wanted to make you aware of is that recently cult of athena has started stalking tatami mats again they didn't for quite a long time, and uh, it's pretty reasonably priced. Their shipping is pretty good. I'm actually getting a bunch of them. I'm, I just ordered 20 of them, so I can do more sore tests. So uh, yeah, I'll also leave the link down below if you're looking for tatami mats for sore tests and whatnot. All right, now onto the things I want to show you. So this is not a review, at least I don't consider it to be a review. It's not intended as such. It's just a first impression. And uh, please let me know what you think about this type of video. Do you like the first impression thing? Do you, would you prefer me to move on directly to the review video? I think it's useful for that. Well, for one, it means more videos because I can do that first and then I do my testing, which takes a while and I can do the final review. And then you can also see if the opinion changes throughout and you know I can just cover more as opposed to trying to cram everything into just the review video and talk about everything at once. So, uh, but again, let me know. I'll try to do a survey here in the video. There should be a card that you can use to vote on it, but uh, either way. So let's move on to the thing. So first off, I got this dildo here. <laughs> yeah, um, it's actually a spear with a sheath, which sometimes gets a little stuck on there. There we go. The Schrade, what was it? SCHSP1. That's the Phantom Spear. So uh, it's got a blade made of three CR13 MOV stainless steel, which uh, as far as I know is not a particularly hard steel. It's, in fact, it's really quite soft. I've tested other things made of that steel. Uh, so it's rather cheap. Um, so I'm personally not a fan of this steel, but uh, I'll see how it holds up. The shaft is made of glass filled nylon fiber. And uh, this one here is available for 65 US dollars on Amazon. So it's definitely not expensive, but um, I'll have to see how well it holds up. I'm a little bit, with this sort of construction, I'm always a little bit worried. And so you can see the tang goes to right here. I mean, it's got three screws in there, which is good. If it was only one or two, that might be a little iffy. Um, with three, you know, that's pretty decent. Um, what I'm a little bit worried about is if something happens, like if there's some um, impact stress here, especially when throwing, and I mean, a spear like this, of course, is intended for throwing, among other things. So this, I'm worried it might crack right there and snap off, but we'll see about that. Maybe I'm just a little paranoid here, but um, the blade itself, no problem with that. I mean, it's very thick. You can see right here. Uh, it could bend due to the fairly soft steel. But uh, yeah, this is the main thing that I'm a little bit worried about. Otherwise, uh, it seems like a neat design. It's pretty short for a spear. I mean, it's uh, intended as a you know, modern survival spear. You know, just how useful that would be is debatable. Uh, it's got... An end cap here which unscrews and inside there is a ferro rod which is nice to have and uh, you can there's a bit of space here you can put some stuff in and in fact uh, there is this watertight container here and in there we've got some fishing gear 
so I don't know how well you can see that but I'll show that in more detail in the review as you can see it's got paracord wrapping now on this beer I don't like it to be wrapped uh, simply because the way you normally use a spear or at least in fighting you would slide your hand up and down which is just a little harder to do this way there is more friction and it's a bit awkward I mean you can still do it but it, it might get stuck and such so I think I'll probably eventually take this off um, I mean, at least this part here, the lower you could keep on. And I mean, it is useful to an extent. In fact, uh, if you wanted to thrust with this and you have your other hand here, there is something to stop your hand. As long as it holds up, this is going to be pretty good. I'm a little worried about the, the steel and the construction here, as said. But uh, the design overall, not bad. It's pretty light. Um, it would be nice if it was longer because then you could also use it as a walking stick uh, with the sheath on obviously but um, you know for as a throwing spear that would certainly be quite suitable so I'll have to see when I get around to doing some tests with it and then I'll show you what I think about it afterwards all right onto the knives here is the Schrade Ultra Glide SCH 305 this is uh, supposed to be a very smooth action due to the ball bearing pivot Ironically, this is actually one of the grittiest feeling folders that I've handled so far out of the box. Um, now it seems that it's definitely breaking in, but particularly when I first got it out of the box and opened it for the first time, it did not feel particularly smooth whatsoever. So you could actually feel like the, the little balls there grinding on the blade. So, and, and I can still feel that. So it's, it got a lot better because I was just sitting there for a while doing this. So you basically have to do that for half an hour until it's, it actually starts feeling smooth. And as I said, it's, it's okay now. It's still not terribly smooth by any means. So uh, that was a bit disappointing. I was actually looking forward to that in particular. Um, this is quite an affordable knife. It's only uh, 25 US dollars at Amazon. And uh, at least in my opinion, usually you can't expect very smooth action from a fairly cheap folder. So I was looking forward to this and, and thinking, you know, maybe this feels pretty good for the price. But, mm. You know, it's, it's not brilliant. The liner here has got some pretty serious serration and it does not feel very good, especially when you uh, close the knife a couple of times. This gets really rough on the thumb. So not too happy with that. However, the blade shape is nice. The, uh, the overall shape, shape in general, the handle feels really good, I have to say. Like both due to the overall contour it's quite good in the hand and it's got G10 inlays here. Those work really nicely. So it's not slippery. The blade is made of 9CR18 stainless steel, which uh, I don't know too much about, but it seems like a fairly decent steel for the price. And uh, hey, wait, that's two pages. Just to show you the sharpness. So, not bad. It's not amazing. You can uh, hopefully see that there's, it's not the smoothest cut, but it's all right. You, uh, you could change that. You'd have to change the angle a little bit. Now, this is a general thing that I noticed about the Schrade knives I've tried so far. So, the the angle seems relatively wide so here's the secondary bevel right there i don't know if i'm close enough for you to be able to see that but um i can feel a very pronounced shoulder there where it transitions from the the primary bevel to the secondary so this can drag a little bit in the material that, that you're cutting but um otherwise seems like a pretty solid design and uh, 
as it breaks in, my opinion might change. We'll see about that. Then the next one is the Schrade SCH 205, no wait, was it? 223, in fact. And uh, this one here is also a really affordable one. This is the cheapest knife out of the bunch. It's not the lightest pivot, as you can probably see. You have to give it a pretty solid flick to get it open, which you know, is not that, that big of a deal, especially for the price. So this one's got a blade made of 9CR18 MOV as well, just like the previous one, and uh, aluminum handle. This one is only $15, so that's really quite cheap. And uh, so there's not too much you can nitpick for, for that sort of price. And um, I do like that it's got this additional guard here. Not only does it have the flipper that rotates and forms a guard here, but it's also got this one. Even if you were to you know, do like an aggressive push cut or something or, or stab into something, then you wouldn't slide up the blade, which is nice. The handle is very simple. I mean, you can see there's, it's just flat, there's no texturing or you know jimping or anything. Um, doesn't feel amazing as a result. It's just it's a very simple slab of aluminum that you wrap your fingers around essentially, um, which you know it's not nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, it's not terribly slippery. I mean it could be better, but as long as you don't get it wet, it's not going to be a major problem. Now, I wouldn't work in with this in an environment where it's essential that you don't slip and your hands might end up wet, anything like that. That could be a problem, but uh, regular EDC shouldn't be that big of a deal. Got a pretty long belt clip. The, uh, the liner on this one is definitely more comfortable than the other one. It's got smoother or smaller serrations there. So definitely not as much of a thumb biter as the previous knife. Pretty simple overall, overall blade shape. The uh, sharpness on this one uh, always depends on whether you cut with or against the grain of the paper, of course. With the grain, it's fine. Let's see here. With the grain, it does pretty well. Here, not so much. Let me try the other one as well for comparison to see if they are the same. Yeah, same here. Again, I definitely have relatively low expectations for a $15 knife. There's just not a whole lot you can expect. It's not going to be premium grade steel. It's not going to be a masterful edge geometry or anything like that. It's not going to be the smoothest pivot, etc., etc. So there are going to be limits. Like the pivot is has a lot of resistance. It's smooth, don't get me wrong. In fact, it feels smoother than the other one, oddly enough. You can see it's got a ball detent. There's the indent in the blade that the ball slides into. So that's what causes this to snap in place. So that retains the blade pretty well. Don't have to worry about it opening in the pocket. And in Canada, you don't have to worry about getting in, into trouble for a centrifugal knife. So uh, yeah, it could be easier to open, but if you give it a, a good flick while using the flipper, it's all right. And then the next one, this is my favorite out of the trade knives that I got right here. And then this is the favorite out of the trade knives I got right here. This is the Sherlock SCH503. And uh, this is quite a neat design. So the lock is right here. You push that to the side. That's how you close it as well. And what you can also do is you can push that to the side, hold it, and then flick it open. Now, even though you flick it open, this is perfectly legal in Canada because you have to keep holding this button. Meanwhile, that makes all the difference. So that's pretty convenient. And 
it also looks quite nice. They've got different color combinations as well. So the handle here is aluminum with rubber inserts. And those make quite a difference, in my opinion. The rubber inserts feel really good. And uh, you've got a little bit of grippiness. Um, not so much due to the texture. It's really more the way everything is shaped. You've got you know, these beveled grooves here on, on the outlines of the inserts. And the overall shape makes it uh, pretty secure on the hand. So this, this feels really quite good. Very much like that. And um, as far as the pivot is concerned, it's pretty smooth. In fact, this is probably the smoothest out of all three, even though it's not called Ultra Glide. But this glides pretty well, even without loop. And this blade is made of AUS-8 stainless steel, which is pretty solid mid-grade steel. And uh, the price is, what was it, 38 US dollars at Amazon. So first impression, it seems very reasonable. So you're definitely getting good quality sharpness. Pretty good with the grain or against. Same problem here. This requires a very sharp knife. Unless something goes horribly wrong with it for some reason during the test, or if it turns out that it has zero edge retention, which I can't imagine it being a US-8, this should be pretty good. So I, I think this is going to be a recommendation most likely. Definitely like the design and how it feels and all. So, uh, I mean, the other two are not bad, but this here, in my opinion, is the best out of the bunch. And then finally, I also bought this one here, which is my first Benchmade knife, actually. I've never had a Benchmade before. And uh, this one is the Azaria. So, fixed blade, as you can tell. This is made of uh, N680 steel, which I had to look up. I didn't know at all. Apparently, it's known for very high corrosion resistance. Um, supposed to be decent at retention. And it's supposed to take a, a pretty good edge, too. But uh, I'll have to see. Uh, haven't had a knife with uh, or made of that sort of steel before. I'll have to see exactly how much or how useful the, the forward angle is going to be. I think for opening boxes, this should be pretty good. And um, oh, yeah, by the way, the handle scales are Grivery. So that is a nylon copolymer. And this knife here costs 76 US dollars. In the hand, this feels really good. It's got some jimping there. And uh, this isn't overly aggressive, fairly large, but it's somewhat rounded. So this is just uh, exactly the right amount. So it locks your thumb in there, but it doesn't get abrasive. So that's nice. And the handle scales here got a bit of a texture to them. That might be a little too close. So nice and grippy. And I would have normally guessed that the way the tang sticks out past the handle, and in fact, for this, I'll really have to get nice and close to show you. So you can see right here, that sticks out a little bit past the handle scales. Now, I would have expected to not like that, but there's no problem with it. It feels quite good and again that increases the purchase that you got on on the handle so this is not going to slip out of your hand anytime soon here's the sharpness feels smoother than the others this way let's see yeah and here it struggles just like the others Oh, straight down is okay, but otherwise, well, oh, it's a decent edge. It's, uh, I expected a little more from a Benchmade knife, but you know, it's serviceable for sure. The nice thing about the, um, this kind of point here is even if it gets dull, you can definitely still use the point for cutting. Like, look at how 
effortless that is. So you can quite easily cut or I guess tear with just a point. I'll have to see how durable the point is because it is really quite thin. Hopefully I won't snap it off. I won't be too rough with it. I mean, within reason, but uh, you know, the sheath is pretty good. It's, it's in there securely, doesn't rattle or anything and comes out easily. Before I get too rambly, that's it for right now. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Yeah.